Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Black Sky Ranch. My name is Leo. Today, we're going to start a new series, hopefully, called A Beginner's Guide to the Apocalypse. Now, when we talk about the apocalypse, that's a euphemism for any large-scale disaster or emergency. If, we, if our goal is to prepare for the ultimate apocalypse, then everyday emergencies or small-scale disasters will be a piece of cake. And so I'm going to start with part one. We're going to start small and talk about how I, in my daily life, am prepared for the apocalypse. So a little bit about myself and why you may give some credit to what I have to say. Um, we've got 24, 25 years as a volunteer firefighter EMT, all working in a rural mountain area. I've got 22 years working on a 911 ambulance. I've got nine years of military experience, uh, starting with the fire department. I w in the ambulance service, I was involved in three major disaster type emergencies. One was a snowmageddon when we got seven feet of snow in three days and everything was blocked and people were isolated. And I was both a so-called victim of the disaster as well as a responder to the, the disaster. Uh, also, we had a uh, flood emergency um, where roads were blocked, people were isolated, um, power was out. Um, that emergency lasted for several weeks. I was, uh, again, both a victim and a responder in that disaster. Another one was a wildfire. We had a storm of wildfires where, again, people were isolated, evacuated, roads were closed. There were three fires, two major fires and one smaller one surrounding the area. Again, I responded both as a um, firefighter and as an uh, ambulance EMT. We um, had to evacuate a town. I was on the incident command team that was responsible for planning and executing the evacuation of a hospital in an attached nursing home. So I've got some experience with disasters. I also, in the military, um, was a, at one point was a medic, a combat medic, and I re um, was deployed to Iraq. So I've got some disaster experience. What I plan on doing is just showing you how I stay prepared. Um, in my daily life, now everybody is different. People live in different environments, different um, climates. What I do might not work for somebody who lives in Hawaii or Arizona or Norway. Um, so it's just a concept more than a gear list. Um, so we're going to start small with how to prepare, how to just be prepared every day. So we're going to start with clothing. Again, I can't tell you what clothing to wear. It depends on your climate, where you're at, also what's socially acceptable. I will say that if you're the type that will leave your home and go to the store, to the movie, to hang out with friends, wearing a t-shirt and gym shorts and flip-flops, that's wrong. Uh, I know a lot of people that you live in that climate where that's acceptable. I would suggest that you go up one level. So if you normally wear flip-flops, maybe switch over to Tevas that got straps that'll hold them on your feet. Um, if you're if it's too hot to wear anything but a t-shirt, at least bring along a long sleeve shirt. You get stuck somewhere, you get stuck overnight, you get stuck out in the sun, you're gonna want um, more cover. Same with a hat. Some people don't wear hats. Uh, they just hate wearing hats, but bring one along. Stick it in your car, stick it in your backpack, whatever. Bring the hat. Um, if you normally wear tennis shoes, maybe you can upgrade to some of those lightweight hiking boots that are basically tennis shoes with a better sole on them and maybe some more support. Um, if you're somebody that wears shorts all the time, maybe just having a change of clothes, having some long pants along um, could help. Obviously, you scale that up. If you live in a northern climate, um, like where I live, even in the middle of summer, it can get down into the 40s at night. 
So I have warmer clothes with me. Start off um, maybe with just a light layer of clothes, but you can end up with needing a jacket or needing a hat. Also, wear a belt. If it's if it, at all possible, wear a belt. A belt can be used for other things besides holding up your pants. Um, it can hold gear. Um, it can be used for makeshift to tie something together or hold something together. Or, um, and you wouldn't you'd be surprised how many times in an emergency people lose their clothes. You end up in the water, your pants come off. Um, you end up in a car accident, stuff gets caught on stuff. You end up losing clothes. So um, a belt will go a long way to keeping your pants where they belong. So we're kind of going to do a pocket dump. Now, what I have in my pockets and on my belt is what's always there. It's not, I haven't added anything for the sake of this video. I haven't removed anything. I'm just going to do the pocket dump and show you what I carry. Um, same with my little man purse that I carry with me everywhere. I'll explain that in a minute. All right, let's see what we got. I know that a lot of people don't wear clothes that they can, that have a lot of pockets in them. Um, and so some of this stuff that I have in my pockets, you would end up putting in your kind of second level, which would be your man purse or your day pack or whatever. But this is what I have, and it's no particular order just going through my pockets. I like to have a knife that has a point. Kind of the um, criteria is it's got to have a point on it that's um, useful for picking out splinters. If it has that kind of a point, Obviously, there's other fine work you can do with it. So a knife that's clean and very sharp and very pointy. Um, I, I'm a knife guy. I have more knives than a normal person would norm, would carry. <coughs> but you can you can combine as long as we're on knife. You can kind of combine. So I also have to have a knife. Personally, I have to have a knife that I can open and close with one hand. Um, it's very important to me to be able to get it out with one hand, open it, do what I have to do and get it back in my pocket without um, having to set it down um, and you, where you end up losing it or whatever. So obviously you could have a knife that you can open and close with one hand that also has a fine point. So you don't have to have necessarily two knives, um, but I do. Um, so as long as we're staying on, we'll stay on knives for a minute. Swiss Army knife. Now I have a past video from long ago about how I gave up on the Leatherman type tools because the main reason I carried a Leatherman is, is for the pliers. And, um, I, and, every, and those pliers just are not that useful to me. They, every time I used one, every time I used one for any work, I pinched my hand on those pliers. They're just not very ergonomic. So I, I changed over to carrying pliers because that's what I wanted in the first place and a Swiss Army knife. And the, those two combined gives me pretty much everything that's on a, a Leatherman tool. And the weight is not any different when you come to those larger ones. Um, so a Swiss Army knife, this is the one I carry around the homestead and in the woods. It does not have um, a Phillips screwdriver on it, but it has the regular screwdrivers. The reason I, this is my woods one is because it has a much better all than uh, the regular, most of the, the red handle types with Army knives. And I just use this a lot, both as a scraper and as an awl, for making holes in leather, plastic, whatever. Um, with the orange cord, one of these days I'm gonna get a big giant reel of orange cord and tie it to everything. But um, your more important um, tools it's nice to have a lanyard for one thing so you don't lose them, and it's nice if it's orange um, so you can find it when you drop it in the snow or the leaves. All right, so that leads us to the carabiner. Always carry one of this. It holds one end of my lanyard. Well, lots of other uses, too, in uh, getting yourself out of trouble. You can use it for a makeshift repelling device. Um, you can use it to, as a pulley. A lot of things you can do with it. I keep it here. One of the one of the things I use it for is whenever I have a, a big um, 
ring of keys. Like someone says, here, go up here to this truck and get something. And here's the keys. And I get this ball of keys to go up to the truck. Um, and I, if I stick it in my pocket, I'm going to forget it. I'm going to go home um, with the keys in my pocket. And um, so I clip them to my carabiner right here so that every time I walk, they bang me in the, in the groin which is annoying, which means I'm gonna get rid of them as soon as I can, which means I'm gonna go find whoever they belong to and give them back. So that's one of the uses for my carabiner. All right, so getting out of order here. Um, a little mini Sharpie, a permanent marker. Um, they're just good for a lot of things. You put a tourniquet on somebody, you're gonna mark a T on their forehead and the time, um, just taking notes, and you need to write down a a license plate or an address or a phone number real quick you can just and you don't you can just pull it out and write it on your hand write it on your clothes um, just a all around useful thing this is just a random piece of 550 cord that was laying around i just like having little strings with me all the time and i just stick it in my pocket so it'll probably just stay in the pocket of this particular jacket till i find a use for it now, I know, like I said, a lot of people don't, aren't going to be wearing pants with cargo pockets, so some of this stuff will go somewhere else. Um, this is a, my ready lighter. I have other fire starting methods that, um, that are sealed in such a way that they won't get um, lose all the gas by getting pressed in your pocket. And, but I like to have one that I don't have to unwrap or dig out or you know, untape every time I need a lighter. So I keep one that's just a ready lighter. Um, and as long as I have a backup, I don't mind having it uncovered. Here's a little pouch that my wife made uh, using a, a piece of broken tape measure to make a snappy thing. And so next time you have a tape measure that breaks, it's going to get thrown away. Save a piece of it. Make one of those. I don't know, most of you are probably too young to remember when we used to have little coin purses that had this kind of a closure. But this is always in my, in my pocket. If I don't have cargo pants on, it'll be in my jacket pocket. If, if I really don't have any pockets that I can put it in comfortably, I'll put it in my little go bag. So what's in here? Just off the top floss that the dentist gives me every time I go there. He gives me one of these little flosses and um, for flossing my teeth. Also, I have used it to sew, to repair something, sew something up. Earplugs, often overlooked, not only for when you're shooting, but also you're working around or have to be around um, generators or loud machinery. Um, they come in handy. Also, if you end up in a place like a shelter during a disaster where you're in the middle of a high school gym with 75 other people on cots coming in, going out, making all kinds of noise, and you need to sleep, um, earplugs come in really handy. And they're cheap, and you can put them everywhere. Now, again, this is just out of my pocket. I haven't pre-prepped any of this. I don't know why I have paper matches in here. I'm sure they were just laying around on a table somewhere. I picked them up and stuck them in here. The chances that they'll work um, is, is small. You know, they, they're not very durable, but they don't take up any room um, and they may work to help me get a fire started. They have a little button compass. Um, it's a teeny tiny one, it's got a lanyard on it. If I decided I need to use a compass, I'd pull this out and put that lanyard around my neck or tie it to a button or something so that I don't lose it because um, it's very small and easy to lose. This um, doesn't have any fluid in it, which can be a pain when you're trying to um, use it because it takes a while for that needle to settle down sometimes. Right? That's why they put fluid in compasses to dampen that. The thing is, particularly at this elevation, which is a little over 8,000 feet, every compass I own that has fluid in it has a big bubble in it. As soon as you bring it up to elevation, 
you get a bubble. Um, I've never been able to get rid of one. Um, it doesn't keep it from working. You just have to be conscious of making sure that bubble isn't interfering with your needle. But um, this is just kind of a backup and it's tiny. I have a piece of inner tube, ranger band, whatever you want to call it, just a piece of a old bicycle inner tube. Um, can be used as a flame extender. I can light this with my lighter and to get to use as tinder to get a fire started. You can also use it just as a rubber band to hold something together to repair something. Lots of uses. I have a little ferrous cerium rod and a striker. Again, it's just tiny, um, but it'll work. This is a cheap toy magnifying glass that I, again, picked up somewhere, um, just laying around. Somebody was going to throw it away. Um, the other day, I actually started make, trying to make this video a couple days ago when it was sunny. Um, the sound, something happened with the sound, and I had to trash the whole video. But at that time, I did try this with the sun to see if it would produce enough heat to start a fire and it would not um, but it's still a magnifying glass in case I need to look at something small and it's all plastic even the lens is plastic it weighs nothing it costs nothing if I lose it I don't care but it. it may come in useful I've got some cord the required 550 cord um, is Useful again. I just like having strings around. It's this long in case you're interested. You know, this is a small pouch that's supposed to fit in a pocket, so I don't need it. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to put 100 feet of cord in this. However, I do have some Kevlar, and this stuff I don't remember exactly, um, but I think it's around 200 pound breaking strength, and um, and there's a good amount in there. I don't know how many feet that is. 10 feet maybe, but you could use this if you had to rig up a shelter with a base blanket or some other tarp. It's strong enough to, to hold that kind of um, weight. So here's the little lighter. Like I was saying, this one's got a piece of inner tube over the top to help keep it from getting depressed and spending all its fluid. And it does work. I, the last video I made, I had two of these in my kit, and both of them malfunction. There, something went wrong with the striker mechanism, and they were full of fluid, but they would not light. Um, so that's a reason to always check your gear. It also has a little bit of electrical tape on there um, to use for for tape. And then I have a little. Lens cleaning cloth, I wear eyeglasses, and so I like to have multiple of those available. So that's a lot of stuff for that little tiny pouch. Let's see what else is in here. And the man bandana. You gotta have the bandana. Um, multiple use, I usually use it to blow my nose, but um, again, you can use it for first aid, for a bandage, use it to do a pre-filter on muddy water and use it to put around your neck when it's cold. You can use it as a makeshift hat when you forgot to bring your hat and you're out there with your bald head in the sun. You make a little gypsy scarf out of it. Lots of uses for a bandana. I always have a bandana. All this stuff here, I always have on me. Um, I went to a wedding the other day and I had my pliers, and they, they were in my coat pocket because it just doesn't look right with nice clothes. Um, and I also had uh, my knife, my bigger knife. And it's this one is kind of shiny and nice, and I was able to wear it to a wedding without uh, raising too many eyebrows. And when it came to cut the wedding cake, the bride had this plastic 
butter knife she was about to cut the cake with. They forgot to have any kind of fancy knife. And I said, wait, stop, don't do that. Pulled out my knife. The bride and the groom used this knife to cut the wedding cake. But uh, so that leads to this. I like to have a larger knife. Again, I'm a knife guy. If you had just your one-handed opening knife that also had a sharp point, um, then this and a Swiss Army knife would probably be enough. I like to have extra knives. I have at least three times I have been on duty and had to help somebody butcher skin and butcher game, uh, an elk, two elk actually, and a deer. When I was on duty and they're like, hey, can you help me? I just got an elk or an elk was just hit by a car or I just killed a deer. Can you come over? and give me a hand so um having a knife that's suitable for that is just that's just me i'm not saying you need to do that uh, the knife sheath also has a piece of inner tube around it um, for as retrievalists we discussed i think that is everything in my pockets so now what i'm going to do is get my little man purse now, as I said before, I, I started to make this video a couple days ago, and at that time, I wanted, it, I wanted it to be raw. I wanted to get that bag out of my truck, where I keep it. Not going, I didn't go over it ahead of time to see if everything was there and if everything worked. Um, I wanted it to be totally realistic and raw. This is real life. This is my bag. This is where I keep it. This is what's in it. Um, well, so I found when I went through it that the, uh, I had dead batteries on a headlamp. And I think there was something else I'll remember in a minute. But um, So always check your gear. I just wanted to put that out there because I replaced them. So now they're good. But I failed there and I wanted to point that out. So the bag, let me talk about the bag. This is a small bag that I have with me in my car. If I leave my car, I take it with me. When I go to work with the ambulance, it comes out of my car, goes into the ambulance. If I leave the ambulance, I attach it to myself. It goes with me everywhere. Let me grab that 